Brands on Brands. Hey everyone, this is Anne Hanley with AnneHanley.com as well as MarketingPros.com. I am delighted to be here with my good friend, Brandon Berkmeyer. If you want to find out how to build a brand that matters to you and your audience, you should be listening to this podcast. So go ahead and click that button and let's get started. In a world where content is king and your reputation is your brand, how do you build a brand that matters? Welcome to Brands on Brands, a home for those that think different and push their boundaries. This is where branding that matters lives. Now, here is your host, Brandon Berkmeyer. Hey, 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 what's up, everyone? Welcome to Brands on Brands on Brands. I'm Brandon Berkmeyer, your personal branding coach, and I believe that building a brand that matters today is the only way to thrive tomorrow. I appreciate you being here. It's season four. We are rolling. It's another interview podcast. And today's guest, Ann Hanley, uh, we had a lot to talk about in terms of content marketing and personal branding. But before that, if you are new to the show and you want to download, get some specific lessons for the show, you can always go to brandsonbrands.com forward slash and then add the episode number and you will be able to find the full blog that describes the show. Also, if you are out there, you are creating content and you'd like to know how to convert one hour of content into one month of content for all you podcasters, content creators, I've created a step-by-step guide just for you, all about repurposing content. You can download it now on my free resources page at brandsonbrands.com forward slash resources. Now let's get into the show here. Our guest today, Anne Handley, as I mentioned, Anne Handley, a little bit about her. She's a Wall Street Journal bestselling author who speaks worldwide about how businesses can escape marketing mediocrity to ignite tangible results. IBM named her one of the seven people shaping modern marketing today. And I've seen her speak at Social Media Marketing World. She's a kick butt keynote speaker, one of the true leaders in the industry, and also happens to be the chief content officer at Marketing Profs, which is the leading marketing training company with more than 600,000 subscribers. She is a Wall Street Journal bestselling author. The books that she wrote that you guys should go check out, they've been out for years. One of the, you know, one of the go-to books in the industry. One is called Everybody Writes, Your Go-To Guide to Creating Ridiculously Good Content. And she also co-authored a book called Content Rules, How to Create Killer Blogs, Podcasts, Videos, Ebooks, Webinars, and More That Engage Customers and Ignite Your Business. Her books have been translated into 19 languages and, uh, you know, not just one of those Amazon sellers, like a Wall Street Journal bestselling author. So again, check that out. One of the bigger names in the industry for sure. She's also a LinkedIn influencer, having more than 420,000 followers on Twitter. It's consistently named one of the most influential marketers on social media. She's contributed commentary to Entrepreneur Magazine, IBM's Think Marketing, Inc. Magazine, Mashable, Huffington Post, American Express, NPR, Wall Street Journal, to name a few. You can always catch her at annhanley.com. That's A-N-N-H-A-N-D-L-E-Y.com. And what we talk about in today's episode is a deep dive into content creation, content marketing, why it matters. We also get into Ant's personal journey into going from creating content for her company and other people and becoming a, a notable keynote speaker to pivoting three years ago to also be working on her personal brand and creating content for her personal brand and building a community around her ideas, which you know it's you don't often get to see someone who's been in the limelight that long share how they switched and what they did and how they think about creating content for their personal brand. So definitely stick around for that and more from our guest, Anne Handley on today's show. Check it out. Brands on Brands. All right, let's get going. I'm so excited to welcome our guest today, Anne Handley to the show. And first and foremost, thank you for being here. Brandon, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to talk with you. Uh, me as well. And the reason I'm excited is we get to talk about one of my favorite marketing topics, which is content marketing, especially around the field of personal branding. And you, your background speaks for itself in that, in that space. And it seems more people than ever are getting 
comfortable creating content, which is exciting uh, in some form or another. Um, but I'd love to set the stage here for the show uh, in terms of the value of creating content. Uh, why does it matter? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I don't even think about content as being separate from marketing necessarily. I mean, think about everything that you do online that's content, you know, whether you are on Twitter, whether you are, are on Instagram where you and I met, whether you are writing a blog post or emailing your list, it, all of that is content. And so I don't think of it necessarily as two separate things. You know, how do you use content in your marketing? Your content is literally your marketing. So I think if you, the first thing is just to shift your mindset and think about everything that you do as an opportunity to tell your story, to brand yourself, to let people know what value you can offer them and to grow your own business. That's the value of, of content. Yeah. When I think what, if we could take it a step further, if we had to think about, because creating content, A, it's intimidating, but we'll get to that. Um, but the idea of what makes it good, especially good for your business, you know, what defines good content versus just content that is, you know, cluttering things up. Uh, I'd love to hear your perspective on that. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's very complicated. I think good content is what meets the needs of your audience. You know, what has value for them? Uh, think about what you do as a business. Think about what is it that you do for others in that business. And that's the sweet spot of your content. You know, I think the biggest mistake that so many companies, so many people make is to think only about themselves, you know, and I get it because we get excited about our products and our services. We get excited about what we do. And so we tend to just talk about that. But your customers, your prospects, your audience does not care about that. What they care about is what that does for them, what that means for them. So if you can focus on what value can I bring to others, that's really the the start of great content. That's the start of, of good content. And by the way, I don't think that people should also overthink a second thing because you said something when you were teeing up this question about how creating content is hard. And I don't think that that's the way you want to go into it. You know, this conversation we're having now is content. You know, you're going to publish it as an audio file, you're going to publish it as a podcast. You may pick out something and put it on Instagram. You may pick out a piece and put it on LinkedIn or, you know, I don't know, however it is that you're distributing it. And all of those touch points, all of those, you know, atomized bits of, of content is content. So I don't think this conversation is hard necessarily. <laughs> At least it's not for me. Maybe it's torturous and really difficult for you. You don't it seem that way, but, you know, could be. And so I think that's what you need to think about. You know, what can I do that I love doing? Maybe it is just having a conversation with somebody and that, you know, you can make that the cornerstone of your own content strategy. Yeah, I think for a lot of people, it isn't, it's intimidating. It's A, they don't know where to start, but B, you know, which format do you pick that's right for you? I tried them all. And it's, this is after 18 years in corporate of not creating content other than PowerPoint presentations for CMOs. But when I had to do it for myself, suddenly it's intimidating because there's the world of ideas in your brain. And then to figure out which format and what idea to talk about, it can freeze you a little bit. And I just had to take the plunge and start. But even that was like, what do I start with? But yeah, for so many people, why is it so difficult? And you know, we frame it like that in our heads, but why do you think it's difficult for people and how can they get past that? I mean, I think you just articulated it beautifully in the sense that we don't know where to start. And sometimes when your choices are are limitless, that in and of itself is limiting, right? And so you think, oh, I could do a podcast, or maybe I should do a blog, or maybe I should start a video channel. You know, I look good on video. You know, there's all these all these things that go on in your head. And I think the important thing, especially for solopreneurs, for individuals looking to build their brand, their personal brand, looking to tell your story and appeal to an audience, I think the most important thing is to don't be limitless in how you're thinking about things. Pick one thing, pick one channel, pick the thing that you love to do the most, because we'll get to this in a minute, but you, you're going to need to do it for a while. So pick what you love to do and do it ridiculously well. <laughs> you know, I think it's it's as simple as that. If you don't, you know, my friend, uh, my friend Jay Bear says that that it's in my first book, actually, that no good content is created at bayonet point, right? In other words, if, if you're forcing yourself to create content, to sit down and, and do it, 
it's not going to be very good, right? Because what's going to happen after a while, you're going to find reasons to not do it. You're going to think, oh God, not that again. And what's the point? And it's not getting the traction I want it to do. And so you'll tell yourself all of these lies and you'll make up all these small excuses until finally you just abandon it altogether. And so I think that's the importance of just finding one thing you love to do, number one. Secondly, make sure that you commit to a schedule, that you do it consistently. And why do I think that's important? Because I think, as you said too, it's like you don't know where to start. You've got to start somewhere. You may feel like you're not sure if this is the right place to start. But one of the things that I've realized after you know doing this for as long as I have, that it almost doesn't matter because you always end up where you where you end up. Like you always end up where you need to be. And you know, I'll give you a really specific example. So you know, I have been a content creator, I guess, before we even called it that. I started as a writer. My background is as a journalist. And then when the internet happened, I went into, um, you know, I started publishing online. And so I've been creating content almost since the internet's inception, really, which is crazy to think about. So in dog years, I think that's like, a, I don't know, a thousand and seventy five years, something like that. Let's see, 18 years ago, I started working at Marketing Profs. I joined the founder as a principal. I joined, uh, or I, I became, you know, their chief content, its chief, chief content officer. And I created content there for the brand. I, I launched the newsletter. I was doing lots of things to, you know, to grow the audience, to build the audience there. Fast forward to just a couple of years ago, and I realized that, you know, while I was still involved in content, I wasn't doing anything that was myself, right? That was just mine. I wasn't doing anything to build my own brand. I wasn't doing anything necessarily to to connect with an audience in all the ways that we're talking about here, right? Something that I own, something that I'm doing consistently. And so I decided three years ago, this week, actually, that I would launch an email newsletter. And I did that under Ann Hanley, not under Marketing Pros. And I did it because I wanted a piece of content that I would own. And I also wanted, secondarily, to see what is it like to build audience? What is it like to connect with people? What is it like to use a, a vehicle like an email newsletter to extend your personal brand and to build your personal brand? And so all of those things I wanted to, to figure out how do I do that? And I chose an email newsletter, by the way, as opposed to a podcast, as opposed to a, a, like a video show. Like you mentioned that you bounced around a little bit until you figured out what worked for you. And the reason why I went with email newsletter is because as I said, I'm a writer and that's the way that I feel most comfortable. That's what brings me joy. And uh, and I just knew that, and it's also something that everybody does, right? And I felt like I could do it myself. I wasn't going to have to get a producer. I wasn't going to have to buy special equipment. All I needed was, you know, myself and my laptop to do it. And so just for simplicity's sake and for streamlining, that's that's why I decided to to go with email newsletter above anything else. And so all that is just a way to say that, you know, I've been doing, I've been publishing my own email newsletter every two weeks. So it's not weekly, it's not daily, you know, it's every two weeks, every fortnight, if you will, for the past three years. And when I started it, I thought, what am I doing? Like, I really don't have anything to say, you know, to go back to your, your comment. I don't know where to start, you know. That surprises me because I was going to say, don't you think you have an advantage because you've been someone who's been writing and editing for so long and honestly, even even when you said that you didn't have, feel like you had your own voice, that surprised me too. Because I'd say like you were the face of a lot of these brands and you were on stages and you were basically, you know, and writing books. And it felt like you're the last person that would say, you know, I wasn't sure like I my, my voice was coming through to paraphrase. And that's surprising. But I was going to say, do you feel like you had an advantage? And then what made you see that, that you're like, I feel like I'm not, I don't have my voice coming out. Like, was it a moment? Yeah. So, well, just to, to clarify, I felt like I was getting my voice out there, but not in a way that was building an audience consistently and an audience, by the way, that I owned. So that's the clarification that I wanted to make. So yes, you know, I was doing a lot of speaking. I was doing books. I, you know, I'd written two books by that point and I was, you know, I was creating lots of content, but I wasn't building an audience and I wasn't building, you know, Harvard is that you want to think about it. I wasn't building fans. I didn't have a community around me. Right. I had these pockets of activity of flurry, but there was nothing that I truly owned. You know, I mean, 
obviously like I, I own accounts on social media, but I don't really own those, you know what I'm saying? So I felt like I needed something that, that I could own. And I think that's the benefit for so many people who are here today listening is you've got to think about what is it that I can create that will give me a community or, or will deliver a community, attract people to me that I can have a relationship with and that it feels like something that I, I own, a platform that I own. Why? Why Why did you want that? Because obviously you were, I'm sure, felt like you were successful in what you were doing. You had a career that's working out for you. You were getting gigs on the side or, or however you want to frame it. But why did you feel like the need to now build something that was your own that you had direct communication with? Yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot of psychic benefits to, you know, having relationships with people, you know, when you own that community, so to speak. But, you know, the reality is that, you know, Facebook can go away tomorrow. Instagram can go away tomorrow. All of those channels, you know, Twitter and LinkedIn, it, all the places that I'm active now and that I do have a, you know, I have connections with thousands of people, but I don't own that and it can go away tomorrow. And, and you know, where does that leave you? And, you know, even at Marketing Profs, I am a principal, but I am not the principal. And so I think it's just important to just to recognize that, you know, you've got to think about building your own database, right? You've got to you've got to build your house on land that you own. And so that's basically why. Yeah, I think that's huge for for people to hear because I've come at it from the perspective of, you know, I was working in a corporate job. And you felt the same way that first I needed to find my voice, which I think you had a leg up on, but also that, you know, like then if I'm going to run a business based on that, um, I'm going to need my own community of people that, you know, like what I'm talking about and uh, subscribe to that. Mm -hmm. But from the other side of it, so for someone who is already out there and has gone further in finding their voice and using their voice, just that there's this nuance of it has to be, you know, a voice for you is different than a voice that you've honed to tell the story of a different company. I think that's huge. Yes, that's exactly true. Yeah. And the other thing is, you know, I mean, to me, there is real joy in creating content. There's like, as I said, I really, I'm a writer, you know, in my heart, I guess. And so I also just wanted the ability to write to people on a regular basis. You know, I, I've told this story before, but, you know, when I, I was a very bookish sort of writerly kind of kid and my parents, my aunts and uncles, you know, friends of the, like whenever it was my birthday or, or, you know, a holiday or whatever, they would always give me diaries because what do you give for a sort of bookish, slightly introverted, you know, child who wants to be a writer, you give them diaries. Right. And I always like, every time I got one, it was like, Oh God, not another one. Because in my mind, there was nothing inherently interesting about writing to myself. You know, I mean, I've since now rethought with the value of a journal and I don't believe that anymore. But when I was a kid, what I really wanted to do was was build an audience, was connect with an audience. And so when I was eight years old, I started a, um, a neighborhood newsletter and I wrote the newsletter and my dad would take it to the office and he'd, he'd Xerox off copies and I would deliver it to all of my neighbors in my cul-de-sac. And that was, for me, it wasn't just about writing, but it was about writing in a way that would connect with others, that would give them something that they'd enjoy. I think of writing as a kind of gift that you can give to others. And so that's always been my impulse is to have the writing do something. You know, I want other, I want other people to read it and enjoy it and connect with it. And I want to bring a little something to their lives. And so, you know, this is almost pathological for me, but it goes way back to when I was eight years old. <laughs> yeah, no, I, that's that's awesome. And I think that if obviously if they want to get a hold of this before I forget, if they want to get a hold of this, they should it'll be in the show notes, but go to annhandley.com forward slash newsletter. You can subscribe, hear what Ann talks about. But can you describe to them what they would expect to hear in a newsletter from Ann? And then I want to talk a little bit about have you ever been persuaded or maybe tempted to try out the other formats, audio, podcasting, video, whatever you want to call it as like your main spot. But let's talk about first, what are they going to find at the newsletter? Oh yeah. Um, it's not your typical newsletter. I'll tell you that. It's um, I tell stories there. I talk about things that I'm seeing or things that I think are interesting. I talk about content and marketing, but it's very much through the lens of, of what I see and what I think is valuable for people. And it's very story driven. So it's, different for a newsletter because it's not what you think of as maybe a typical newsletter. And this goes back to an epiphany that I had a few years ago too, where I realized that a lot of companies, a lot of people, a lot of brands use their email newsletter as a distribution strategy for content instead of thinking about it 
how I thought about it, which is the opportunity to build a relationship one-on-one with a person in their inbox. And, you know, this isn't a, a, a new idea, but I think as marketing has evolved and as social media has evolved, we spend a lot of time thinking about the news in the newsletter and we want to talk about what we want to talk about. You know, we want to share what we're doing, but I think the value of a newsletter is not in the news, it's in the letter. And so I wanted to focus on that letter piece of it. And so when you get my newsletter, it feels like a letter and people tell me that um, constantly. In the past three years, I've gone from about 2,000 subscribers who were just, and those 2,000 subscribers are people who just sort of said, uh, yeah, we want to hear from Anne the four times a year that she publishes a blog post on her personal website. And I'm now at 45,000, you know, three years later. This is all without really intentional promotion. That's mostly just people who recommend the newsletter to other people. And so that's very gratifying to me too, just that people love it and share it with their friends. And that's how this newsletter has grown. Yeah. And what's funny is that it's a very human way to approach it in terms of like thinking about that in a human way, how to connect, how to write on a, in a one-to-one way to someone. Uh, it aligns with one of like the first guest ever to the show was Mark Schaefer 150 episodes ago. He was like, I think what I modeled the show after was like this, this human to human connection, thinking about marketing in a human way is like, how do you as what, someone who has something to offer, find someone that needs it and connect in a human way. And it sounds like you're, you're building and you think in that kind of same way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I love that. I love Mark, by the way, such a, such a generous soul. Yeah. And it's almost a cliche, isn't it? In marketing, we say that all the time. It's like, oh, it's human to human. But you know what? When you see it, like when you see companies doing that in whatever format it ultimately takes, when you see them communicating with, with you know, true, honest empathy and in a real human way with others, I mean, it's astounding, isn't it? It's like it, it always makes me notice. If you ask someone to write a letter or an, an email to that, that is a newsletter, and then you ask them to write a, again, say, right now, write an email to one person, they're completely different. Like we just, for some reason, put a different hat on every time. Yeah, exactly. And I see it all the time, you know, with, with, um, with marketers who I talk to, who I'm, you know, doing writing workshops with or whatever. Um, I see it all the time where, you know, we ask them to write an email newsletter and they almost turn into like a like a, a sort of bot or something, you know, and they're like, dear valued subscribers, you know, <laughs> and it's it's not that, you know, it's like, hey, you, it's like there's one person getting that email. You don't have a room full of people who are going to be opening that email simultaneously and reading it aloud, do you? No, you don't. <laughs> and so it's just I think it's a shift in mindset if you if you focus on the letter and not the news. Yeah, no, exactly. So I do, I want to take a, a step kind of deep into something tactical as we, you know, I only have a few more minutes with you and I want to make sure that I give something that's like useful that you've used. And, you know, so when you started to say, you know what, I'm, I want to do something for me and something that helps uh, kind of build that connection. What are some of the things that you recognized that continue to help your personal brand that I could say, Hey, if you could do something tomorrow to help you get started or just move a little further on your journey of growing your personal brand, what would you tell someone to do? Um, well, I think I would tell them to launch an email newsletter, honestly, (laughs) or a podcast. I mean, a podcast is fine too. You mentioned a minute ago, you know, why not, you know, audio or a podcast or have I ever thought about shifting? And I haven't, um, only because I've, I really do enjoy writing my own email newsletter and, you know, I enjoy not breaking that chain. And I honestly, the reason why I publish it every other Sunday is because I just flat out do not have the bandwidth to do anything else. So yeah, I mean, I think the important thing is is to launch something that you own and not on a social channel. Like I think it's, I think it's fine to be active on Instagram. Like, listen, you know, Instagram is my favorite social network. I absolutely love it. I think it's a fantastic tool and resource and tactic to use, but you don't want to build your entire business on it and your entire presence on there. So think about what can you own and think about, again, what is it that that you want to create? No, I love that. And I I think what I'm looking at is there's a lot of new channels. Obviously, content marketing always evolves and changes and there's new places to create. And, you know, you can chase where those things are going. And personally, I picked a platform that I like to create on and I just kind of repurpose to the other places. But what are you excited about that's happening right now in the industry? Because, you know, if I have if I have Anne on the phone here and I'm, you know, (laughs) I can pick her brain, you get you talk about these trends and things like that all the time. So it might be tiring for you, but it's exciting for me. I'd love to hear, what are you excited about that's going on? Oh boy. Um, I mean, I just think it's a fantastic time to be in marketing. You know, it's, it's, you know, as we're talking now, we're what, uh, 10 months into the pandemic here in the U S at least 10, 11 months, something like that. And I think that the, the pandemic has 
fundamentally shifted marketing <laughs> in really significant ways. And the the way that I I think it's most personally interesting to me, and and I, it dovetails into what we've been talking about here too, is the way that it has ushered in this sense of empathy for others truly understanding the challenges that other people are up against. And I think it's changed the way that companies communicate, which I think is is for the better. I mean, there's nothing I can say that is that has been good about the pandemic. Like, let's just get that out there. But nonetheless, I think that it has ushered in some, some interesting, I don't want to say opportunities because that's not the right word, but it has shifted marketing in, in some significant ways, in ways that I, I find gratifying to see. Because I think we, as much as we've been talking about, you know, human to human, and as much as we've been talking about how important it is to show up with your your true self, I do think that the companies who have really been successfully navigating their way through the pandemic, even, you know, even now, as it seems like there's light at the end of the tunnel, you know, even now, the companies that have done incredibly well are those that really do understand things from their customer's point of view that have been communicating in ways that reflect that. So that's like that at a macro level, I'm I'm excited about that. At a micro level, I mean, gosh, I just think there's such opportunity still for so many of us who are thinking about, you know, building our own personal brand of building audience on our, our own channels that we own. I just think that that, you know, there's there's so many new opportunities all the time. And so yeah, I personally I'm just really I'm just excited by by where we're at right now. Yeah, I, I I couldn't agree more. I think it takes kind of something as serious as this year has been to kind of shake you in a way that's like maybe think about more like what matters to you. And I think we all get a little bit more focused when we kind of are pulled out of our reality to and have to think about what matters to us and how we want to represent ourselves uh, out there in the world. Um, I appreciate your time today, Anne. I think we, there's a lot of examples in today's podcast. If they want to go back and rewind of how to get started, how to look at someone who's either starting or even that's been doing it as long as you have, there's still an opportunity to figure out like, how do you find your voice? And I think the strongest way to do that is by using your voice so that you can find it because it's through action that we truly find clarity. So I appreciate you coming on, sharing these amazing ideas with us today, Anne. And uh, I, I hope to do this again sometime. Yeah, you bet. Let's do a part two sometime. There you go. All right. Thank you. And each of you guys, don't forget to go to annhandley.com forward slash newsletter. Check out what she's been dropping there. Also, if you're curious, Marketing Profs is always a resource for you as well. And if you get a chance to go and see Anne speak at Social Media Market World when events are back or any other event that she's speaking at, I would encourage you to do so. Truly a master in keynote speaking and getting people motivated. So uh, again, tune in every week as we bring more personal branding and content marketing advice to you, and we'll catch you guys next time. You've just taken your marketing knowledge to another level with this episode of Brands on Brands, but we have plenty more ways to help you build a brand that matters. Head over to brandsonbrands.com for resources, as well as access to our blogs, videos, and exclusive coaching sessions with your host. Be sure to visit brandsonbrands.com.